welcome to the Citizen Channel. We've got a little special today. It's a city past and city present in one go, and I'm proud to say that and uh, happy to say that because obviously we're going to talk about the magazine, the wonderful magazine. Uh, it was a fanzine when it kicked off uh, back in the late 80s, and I'll call it a magazine now. It's I think that's uh, it's uh, I subscribe to quite a few magazines, and this is the one I probably most look forward to to reading and, and, and literally uh, dissecting if you like because I do actually there's not many magazines I read from one cover you know cover to the back but this this is definitely one I'm not just saying that guys it is honestly because of uh, all great content in this of course we're going to talk about King of the Kipax aren't we this is a last issue there's another one out very soon as I'm recording this another week or two so again I'll be looking forward to that uh, obviously £4 issue, 281 There, We've come a long way, but for £4, you certainly get your money's worth. But hey, I'm going to say we've come a long way. There you go. <laughs> there's, there's the very first one. Uh, a gentleman that's very familiar with uh, City fans, certainly of my, of my age and a little bit younger as well. But, uh, yeah, there you go. There, there's the first issue. Absolutely fantastic. So I would say 34 years and still here. And we used to have a song, didn't we, uh, 34 years and we're still here. And obviously we, that sort of goals for this uh, wonderful zine, fanzine stroke magazine as it has become now. And of course, was, that was based on a certain banner, wasn't it? Which uh, I will say now, we, did, we didn't have to sing 35 years and we're still here, but uh, I have no doubt we will be singing uh, 35 years and we're still here about this wonderful publication. So uh, I'm not going to jinx anything, uh, Dave, believe me. That's uh, uh, for, for many years yet, I'm sure. Absolutely brilliant stuff. Right, yeah, Sue. Obviously, Sue is able assistant there. Sue's wife, of course, puts this together as well and does it all little pieces as well, but we'll have a chat about that in a minute. And they can both be proud of the achievements that they've done. And all the team, all the KK team that have worked with him over the years, and obviously there's a lot mentioned in this one. There's some that haven't contributed to this latest issue that obviously do. I'm thinking of Emily as well. Young Emily, wonderful Emily. I've, I've chatted to her a couple of times recently, who, who obviously... Has, uh, has contributed, and there's lots of different writers who perhaps aren't in this issue, won't get a mention, but uh, obviously we know, they, they know they're out there and all, all great stuff on our wonderful Club City. Yeah, it first appeared there, I've got that one in uh, September 1988, well that's, that's what it was dated, uh, 50p, uh, a rare 50p, it wasn't the first uh, City Zine of course, uh, but as we know it's the last man standing uh, we were already off and running, of course, for that 88-89 season. I had sort of little plans myself uh, around that time, but that's another totally different story. But uh, some of you might know uh, the story of the Citizen magazine, but uh, that never was, that nearly was. I'll do that one day. I'll do a full thing. It has been in the King of the Kickbacks, and Dave's kindly sort of uh, stuck up for me at the time and things like that. But, uh, yeah, uh, that's another story. Anyway, we're talking about King of the Kickbacks. It is still here and still going. Uh, five games played, I think. Yeah, there was five games covered in this first issue, of course. Uh, we're going to concentrate on the new one, but we'll just have a brief uh, brief chat about this first one. Uh, one win, two draws and two losses. Not the greatest start, was it? But the season would get better, as, as we know. Uh, it was a funny time, really. Uh, issue one reflected on the low average crowds, a drop uh, from 1982 uh, to 83. We had a drop of about 7,000. Uh, in support, uh, there, are, there are reasons behind that. Obviously, uh, Dave uh, sort of commented on Trevor Francis being one of the problems, but obviously, uh, we dropped to just under twenty seven thousand through the gate, and and uh, one of the problems with that was we had an awful season, of course, which ended in relegation, and uh, Mr. John Benson had took charge at one stage, so it's no no wonder. But I'm sure, obviously, the Trevor Francis thing did have an effect on it, and uh, perhaps we wouldn't it wouldn't have happened. Perhaps we wouldn't have had that dreadful relegation if, if he had stayed with us. But by the end of season 87, 88, yeah, talk about crowds. Our average was down to just under uh, 20,000. Down to, well, just under, well under, 19,472. And yet, you know, I know I know myself, obviously, it was sort of typical City fans. We were rallied behind our team after relegation. You know, we... You know, we were sad and angry and upset and everything, every sort of phase you go through, obviously, at that sort of stage. But uh, there was there was a determination at the time, and obviously Dave and Sue and, and the King of the Kippax reflected that when it when it sort of first came out, that we weren't going to be down. You know, we weren't going to be down for long. Well, <laughs> up and down for long, as it turned out. 
So 280 issues and over 33 years later, of course, Dave and Sue are still dedicated to supply City fans with hard copy information. Uh, I do miss the City magazine. I'll admit the City magazines over the years. I was gutted when that stopped because I, I am, a, as you know, if you watch any of my vlogs in, into magazines, I enjoy reading at the you know books, novels, magazines, whatever it is. Uh, so even even now, when seemingly everything you need to know is a sort of mouse click away, isn't it? Let's be honest about it. But there's a phrase used by modern modern vlogs. I've not particularly used it myself, but it has been used quite rightly. Uh, nothing wrong with it. That uh, it's by the fans for the fans. That's that's one of the statements you see, and this rings as true now for King of the Kipax as it did all them years ago. It's by the fans for the fans. Of course, it was, that was one of the, the original things. And why I, for one, always supported this uh, terrific zine. When I could, obviously, there was moments in time when I couldn't get to games. I couldn't buy the thing, obviously. But as soon, as soon as I had enough pennies together, I was going to watch my beloved Blues again. Obviously, life gets in the way sometimes, doesn't it? I would uh, go out and purchase this. I even have some online copies, which I don't like. I like the hard copy. I don't, I don't like the Kindle copies. But uh, hey, that's that's uh, not that's me. Uh, if you like a Kindle copy, you can get one. Don't worry about it. Uh, but there you go. It just is one of those things that uh, is part of been part of City for me as uh, as since nineteen eighty eight. It's just part of what City is. The uh, King of the Kid Packs. It always has been. Uh, interesting enough, that first issue he had. He mentions two other contributors. Obviously, he had the uh, the typists. I think his was it, I'm sure it was his mum said uh, some relative. It might have been his mum doing the typing and stuff like that. He didn't have a word processor like me in the day. I I actually had at that stage. I'd, I'd, I'd sort of uh, I was doing some publishing myself, but computer on computer magazines rather than football magazines but uh, yeah it was it was it was sort of uh typing and pasting and that's what i was doing three or four years early before i, I sort of progressed a little bit and bought uh, big apple mac computers at the time desktop publishing it was called brand new at the time desktop publishing when mr mr shah was at uh down in london causing all sorts of chaos to the print unions etc I, I was sort of doing my stuff at the same time using the the most modern technology you can probably get at a sort of my level at a lower level if you like well there he had two contributors uh in this magazine to to add to his own his own uh, stuff as well and then uh, there you go it was a uh, few more than few, few more than two contributors nowadays so we'll have a look we'll have a look at this uh latest issue this t issue 281 i'll have a quick f i'm not going to tell you everything that's in it i'll just give you give it give idea just sort of content that's in this it costs four pound it's 48 pages uh crammed crammed with stuff no waste no wasted space there's images of course but no wasted space in this and the, the funny and serious obviously it gets a lot funnier when City aren't doing as well. I, I find the, these magazines, this the king of the kickbacks over the years. It's been something. You, if I'm if I'm down and City aren't doing well, it, I just love reading other people's views, and and that's what it does. Obviously, when we're doing very well, it's a slightly different thing. It's perhaps not got that sort of gallows humour that I love. I love. I always love supporting City, and occasionally we get to. I get to do it now, but not very often the way City play. Uh, yeah, so the magazine itself, Dave's got his usual little editorial, all, all introductions, etc. Et and then straight to the fe features, no messing about. Uh, Chris Globe talks uh, FIFA and the two year, of course, World Cup plans. And Arsene Wenger, as well, has obviously been involved in this. Is, uh, and he also comments on things away from like Ole's technical area, where obviously he's not just a, he's a manager, isn't he? But is he really? Is he really? We don't know. But no, I think it was the recent Young Boys game where half the team went into the technical area to sort of guide guide and coach the players which is very very unusual so chris globe covers the different things uh obviously with the recent statues brian duffy talks about uh city legends in general yeah some obvious and some not so obvious as they they're all there's lots of legends to me that are not quite you wouldn't build a statue to them but they're still still city legends and uh, brian duffy touches upon that there's a little promotion for STB, the Scandinavian True Blue Zine as well. That's up to issue 142. There you go. It's uh, not bad in itself, is it? John Cantrell introduces his My City World. It's called A Day-to-Day -day Diary of All Things On and Off the Pitch uh, Concerning City. Yeah, so that's obviously, if you like, just a... Uh, all all the city teams, not just the men's team, all the different things. So obviously, this looks at the month of September and what happened each day, which which is great as a for me as well as a, obviously I'm a sort of a, not a, not a big historian, but I suppose I'm a historian in a way. I like doing looking at history and doing things on city. So it's great for, for people like me to get all this informa information. You can sort of glean things, and it's absolutely brilliant from John Cantrell. Paul Bunbury talks about. 
the late great Jimmy Greaves, of course, and uh, his thoughts on Sterling, the the enigma, what we're going to do with him, and uh, there's more. There's actually more. That's a couple of like a little two items. He's actually got his own piece later on as well. I'll just have a quick chat about that. Mrs. Ed, yeah, Mrs. Ed adds her thoughts on what's in the name and gives her thoughts on City's City City Collins Collins over time. So obviously we we can't go through a collie without Colin Bell, can we? And we end up at, uh, after a couple of other collies, at Collie Savage, of course, who has contributed to King of the Kipax uh, for about 20 years. And I, I am lucky enough, and I have the honour now of, of, of being alongside him, chatting with him in the Bolt from the Blue podcast. So uh, I get to speak to Colin a lot more now than, than I would have done in the past uh, through Twitter, etc. But I get, to, I get to see him and chat to him now, and it's great stuff. But yeah, Mrs. Ed's quite right about an important Colin. I think all things financial of course with Colin Savage you get to know the ins and outs of stuff don't you as well financially and that's great it's great when you've got someone like that who isn't dry with it either you know it's it's all, it's all good stuff how was it for you of course uh, looks back at recent games played uh, uh, events both and off the pitch so obviously it's, 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 it's not just a straightforward match report it's talk about the fans and what's happening etc and, and things that have happened to the writers uh, four, four games are covered in this issue uh, this is part one of four games there's another part two as well with, a, with three more games later on uh, there's a, 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 la, a lad called Will, Will Lawrence uh, he's got Eight, he's got 16 in brackets, so I assume that's his age. There you go, Will. My, my, my apologies if it's not. And David, that's not right, correct. But uh, contributing one of the reports, it's great to see younger uh, City fans uh, contributing as well. And the more the merrier for me, because obviously we want a lot of City fans in, in the media, don't we, going forward. So let's get these. Come on, you youngsters, get out there. Do some uh, sports stuff. Get get journalism. Get, uh, you know, let's, let's outdo this rubbish that's already out there that's against City. Let, let's get out there. And uh, of course, as uh, uh, Conor Edmonds uh, sort of also adds his contributions to the other three. And later on in part two, uh, the other three games, you've got Sean Riley and uh, Conor Edmonds again commenting about their own thoughts on the games with a, with a match report and thoughts. And again, I say from my point of view, these things are great to look back on as well. Uh, Tony Petch has a look at City's September and memorable events over the years. So going back to the very start of City, back to the 18, 18, late 1800s, of course. So that's that's great. You know, again, another thing that I love as a as a, that side of the thing, and obviously key things that have happened in September over the years. Chris Hart gives us part one, so we're going to get part two in the next issue of uh, My City Memories. He takes us from the mid sixties to the late seventies. Many, many shared memories, mate. I obviously reading this. My first game was the mid sixties as well. So, I mean, he was looking at the game against uh, the Northern Premier League eleven at, at Wigan's ground uh, back in nineteen seventy four. I was there that night. Yeah, it was all kicking off with Liverpool fans. I was remember that very, very well. It was uh, absolutely brilliant. It's nice to, to sort of share memories with with Chris on that one. But that's a great piece. I'm looking forward to part two, of course. Simon Curtis covers the magazine Football Weekly News. I don't think it lasted long. I think it lasted. Uh, three or four two or three years something like that uh, I think it run from 78 ish to about 81 or something like that but obviously looks at the city features that were, were inside that magazine a great article and a great historical piece on Hyde Road yeah the Hyde Road fire in November 20 um, potential links to the IRA which I haven't read anywhere before that's probably me not reading reading things properly but uh, and some I put one up there and I'm, and I'm sure Dave won't mind a hand drawn image of Hyde Road that is brilliant I was I, Amount of times I've looked for good images of Hyde Road, and I've come up with a couple that I've found. But I've, hey, I've, I could have done with that, Dave, and I've been doing them. But that was absolutely brilliant uh, hand drawn images, which you, which we, we get we you get those hand drawn images throughout. And I used to have those in King of the Kipax one, of course, as well. But uh, of grounds we were going to, etc., Main Road. Well, that was great. So that's a great piece as well. Great historical piece. Let's say if you're into history, these sort of things might not interest you perhaps as much as the newer stuff, but I, I love it. That's why I read it from cover to cover, to be honest with you. A small ad for the new book, which I gave a mention on one of my blogs recently, The Man City 50 Memorable Matches from uh, Stuart Brodkin. That looks like a great read. It's a fix. Uh, there we go. It's a fix. The, the thing that's still there from issue one, 34 seasons later, uh, covers upcoming games, of course, with these hand drawn images. Of the grounds we're going to which are fantastic and uh, just as great now as they were back in the day lots of general info on the clubs and famous supporters and lots of different uh, information you can get on and off the pitch about the clubs we're going to play ross percival yeah he gives us something called five size lots of subjects uh headed yet yeah, little headings so you can sort of have a look at oh that interests me or that interests me or that doesn't or whatever and uh, covered both old and new stuff 
not just about City, but football in general. And that's what it is. There's also a lot of just general football stuff in this, which is a, is a great read as well. Uh, Shell Edmonds has the Cheadle Hume rectangle. There you go. We know it's going to be something to do with the Bermuda Triangle, don't we? He chats uh, he, uh, a reason we can get to more away games now. Not not the greatest reason. It's a bit sad, really, but uh, he just chat about that. He had bits on Ole and Ronaldo and stuff. And uh, a spot near his own, which he calls the Cheadle Hume rectangle, where strange occurrences have seemed to happen to, to him. And him and him and his kin over over time, which is uh, quite funny and good to read. We mentioned Paul Bunbury, didn't we? He had his regular call on the Bum Review. He also talks City and Ronaldo, uh, Pep's pups, uh, as we call them. We all have these names for these teams, don't we? And the erosion of the English language. What what more could we ask? And lots more he chats in that little column. That's great. Editor Dave talks about the recent fallout, of course, with Pep and Kevin Park and the crowds, etc. And poor journalism in general, in general. And uh, obviously talking specifically about a guy called Cross at the Man U Mirror that we all know is absolute useless uh david concannon has concannon balls uh, yeah there's a part two as well yeah does a couple of these uh which you'd expect takes aim at the season so far both good and bad so that's uh, david concannon who's been a uh, i've read his stuff for a long long time and i strip you to recently passed away of course freddie hill please i did a little one myself uh and to tom ritchie of course a massive city fan who was an early contributor to king of the kickbacks and then start his own fanzine, of course, uh, City Till I Cry. I've got a few copies of those in the back as well. Uh, Spitting Image looks at Anfield and the incident where uh, the uh, City City uh, dugout was was spat on. No surprise there, um, but surprise, surprise, as I'm, as I'm recording this, police haven't got enough evidence to pursue it any further, although Anfield, I've said, or Liverpool, I've said they're going to be taking seats out from behind the dugout. So that is a good move, but hey, no surprise that uh, the police haven't been able to take this further. We've got, they've got previous for that, haven't they, the little Liverpool constabulary. Uh, Stuart uh, Brodkin looks into Danilo, yeah, and his sour grapes uh, since leaving City. I'm, I'm not sure how that came about. Actually, so we sort of some we bought some bloke called Cancelo, I think, uh, and paid a little bit of cash as well. But anyway, he talks about uh, I don't know what's happened to that Cancelo guy. I've no idea. Uh, he talks about he'll, Danilo, and I do have a story about my dinner, actually. If you uh, uh, sort of uh, way laid on another podcast, I'm not going to go into that now, but. Uh, Obviously, one of the one of the few city ex city players who went on to sort of not trash us but do us down a little bit after he left. Alan Rainford looks at bogey grounds. Yeah, that's an interesting one. It's certainly uh, there's some obvious ones. Yeah, but there's some not so obvious ones that come at the top of the heap as well. And I won't give it a lot away because you read the article, buy it, guys, if you don't already buy this. Uh, and let's hope I'll just say let's hope we don't play the owls anytime too soon. But uh, I'm not, I won't give too much away. But uh, we're talking about bogey grounds, and you'll know what I mean. Ed Spitz looks at more reporting in the press or bad reporting in the press. Jed Isaacs brings us Jed Sounds Off, of course, another regular that I remember over the years. He touches upon City again and football in general. Phil and Gaz too is a, a sad rags, as you'd expect. A conversation that may have taken place. Uh, we're not we're not quite sure of that one, but as you can imagine, what the content of that. Uh, with the mix of uh, humour uh, and the odd fact thrown in, of course. Tony Petri has Petrify. We talked to Tony before, haven't we? Who talks about City's performance and performances, looks at City's gates in seasons gone by to, to sort of bust the myth about City's fans, which we, well, we're always having to do that, even though we shouldn't need to. And the constant media digs at our crowds. He covers lots of stuff and uh, mentions the fact there was no DVD for 2021. I mean, well, we've moved on a bit, mate, and he appreciates that. But, uh, but why no download? He said, we, we have had downloads before we could download one he's actually literally gone through all the city brief highlights and done his own dvd so he's actually downloaded that that is dedication tony that is dedication tony beyond 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 the realm there but uh i'm sure if you get copies of that i'm sure some of us guys i don't know about copyright but i'm sure of us guys would love to, to buy a copy uh, as i said there was more con- cannonballs he goes on about biased uh, commentators and the lackeys. And to finish, yeah, I mean, uh, I say there's a lot of stuff in this, isn't there? To finish, the back page is a lovely tribute, of course, to to Jimmy Greaves, uh, who I also had the pleasure of watching with some people's comments on on a little brief. And I think I think it happened very shortly before the magazine went to press, so it's it's, it's still still a page uh, tribute. I'm sure there'll be something else coming in the future. 
So there you go. An amazing mix of facts and stories uh, in the main about our wonderful club. Great articles you can just pick up and read and put down if you've got a spare five or ten minutes. Uh, personally, in this issue, I won't say what it is. Uh, certainly none of the guys I've mentioned by name. Uh, there was just one article I wasn't that particularly that interested in. I didn't just one page. One page of this magazine I sort of just skipped through. Uh, without sort of devouring it, if you like. Uh, so, but as I said, it's certainly not any of the guys I've mentioned. I think it's an unnamed article anyway. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna pick on any of the guy who did it, or who did because I don't know who did it. So there you go. But yeah, a vast, a vast amount of information with the usual, usual mix of humour thrown in. As I said, I like the gallows humour when things aren't going too bad. Things are going pretty well at the moment. So for me, you know, I, I like, I like things. You know, I'm a typical old city fan. I, I like that gallows humour, but it's great to read all the good stuff as well, isn't it? Uh, and what's so good about it as well is the excellent, the the writing is superb. Uh, it's easy to read. It's, it's un complicated very simple to read you know it's just excellent writing at its very best i'm sure there's some editing put in but my credit to all the writers who contribute to this absolutely wonderful stuff and even though it covers similar subjects similar times it's you know similar subjects at times it's just the different angles from different people different perspectives if you like so there's no real repetition or you don't think you've read the same thing twice even though you might be reading about a similar incident or a similar thing in the press it's just a brilliant mix that uh I say it never. It's never boring because you you just don't feel as though you've actually, as you say, it's just looking at things from different angles as well. It's a brilliant mix. Uh, absolutely, I mean, Dave puts this together brilliantly. It's a superb. He's got a great bunch of writers who have no know, know their strengths and weaknesses as to what to write about, and the, the, you know they'll, they'll concentrate on that. And it's absolutely stunning for me. I th I think it's a great a great magazine. Probably takes me about five or six sittings to read this. I try, I usually read it generally before I go to sleep of a night. I would say it usually takes me about five. I'm a quite a fast reader, so I don't have had to put it into how long it takes for me to read through. It probably takes up to about two hours for me to devour it cover to cover because I am a quick reader anyway. Uh, but it's, I say, I still look forward to this as much as I did back in that day in 1988 when it first appeared on the, on the Kipak Street. I'm sure, I'm sure it did. Obviously, I don't think Dave had many sellers at that stage. Uh, probably probably just him, him, him and his good lady i'm not too sure but uh, yeah i still look for as i say of all the magazines i do subscribe to this is the one i look forward to most and i drop i stop reading other ones so i can read this when this arrives and then I have to pick the other ones up afterwards so there you go for me personally uh you've been seeing things on the screen for subscriptions etc please if you don't already buy this please do so and i'm sure most of you already can subscribe so i just want to make this as a little tribute as well rather than just a promo for it if you like because it's not it's just it's just how i feel it's not a promotion i've just did this off my own bat i just wanted to say what's out there and how great this magazine still is so please if you don't subscribe do so or even if you just buy the odd copy please it'll be great for Dave. as i say you can't buy it from around the ground now it's all subscription so please give dave and sue and all the kk team your king of the king of the kipax team your support for me, as I said, it's part of uh, city history. It's part of the history of the club for me, certainly from the eight, 1988. And uh, long may Dave and Sue and the, all the King of the Kipax team continue with this uh, great magazine, King of the Kipax. Anyway, thanks for joining me. Whatever you're going to do, rest day. Have a great one. Look after yourselves, look after your friends, look after your families. More importantly, let's all look after each other. We'll be here again on the Citizen Channel. I'll perhaps have a look across, please. Check out my film and TV channel. I try and inform and entertain as on there as best I can. But if it's there or if it's back on here, I only ask one thing, don't I, guys? Please stay safe, Blues. Come on, City. Thanks for watching. <laughs>